a lot of the news headlines on the rapid growth of artificial intelligence have prophesized a doomsday scenario where computers take over and humanity goes extinct. But if you ask Portlander last night, he thinks that might not be such a bad idea, at least the extinction part. He's the leader of what he calls the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement, a decades-long effort to convince humans to stop breeding. His reason is that there are just too many of us and we're killing the planet. So today on CityCast Portland, we're going back to a conversation with Les from earlier this year. We'll get into what exactly his movement stands for and ask whether human existence is really driving our planet towards another age of mass extinction. It's Monday, May 8th. I'm John Natariani, in for Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. So, Les, you've promoted the movement since the 70s. And I'm often called the founder but I just gave it a name. It was here all along. I don't know how long people have been thinking, you know, it, what would really be good for humans and the planet is if we phased ourselves out, just stop procreating, exit peacefully, and just be gone. I joined Zero Population Growth, and their slogan was Stop It Too, which is pretty much what people were doing anyway. So, yeah, I'm, on, I'm in on that. But really, two plus two is four. So it was a convenient untruth. Yeah, so you're saying two kids and two parents. Mm -hmm. Right, and then those have two, and then, yeah. Two plus zero would be the one. That would be the ideal <laughs> number. <laughs> and it's for a couple of reasons. One, one is that we do, especially here in the wealthy region, we do have a huge impact on uh, the biosphere. But also, the biosphere isn't looking too good in the lifespan of somebody born today. Yeah. And I, I really wonder... If it's not de facto abuse to sentence somebody to life in a in a world that we have created, I I think every everybody on the planet should be able to not procreate if they don't want to, and we're a long ways from that now. The the freedom to procreate is fiercely defended. You you even suggest that we might, and of course we're not suggesting that, uh, and people just go nuts. Well, what about the freedom to not breed? Well, yeah. Yeah. But don't you think it's because like it's a deep seated biological kind of like lizard brain thing of, of humanity? We're trying to continue our line because it's a, it's it, it's a very emotional reaction and issue that, you know, when people hear and they don't agree, they're just going to be like, what the heck? Uh, yes. it You know, it's so strong. It may as well be biological, but it's not, of course. Mm -hmm. There's no species that actually has a an instinct to procreate. We all have instincts or urges, in our case, to engage in activities that lead to procreation. And if we know in advance what causes it, well, you know, there, there are quite a few ways we can pre prevent that from happening. So the, uh, the frontal lobe has to take over. We can still let the emotions kind of have some fun as long as we, you know, get snipped or for women, it's now a bicep bilateral self-injectomy so we can make sure that we don't actually procreate even though we want to engage in all those activities that might cause that. Yeah, I'd like to talk about your movement. I mean, I love that slogan, may we live long and die out. Uh, that says it all. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about the goals of, of you know, your movement? Well, yeah, you just said it. You know, the uh, people don't have time for books and even long articles. So give them a bumper sticker. <laughs> thank you for not breeding. Uh, thank you for thinking before breeding. Uh, we're suggesting that they think before they procreate. And if they think it all the way through, think about it. You know, the, all the ramifications. Don't, don't let uh, social conditioning stop them. They mm -hmm. probably will arrive at the uh, the position of, yeah, we don't really want to bring another person in there and raise it. So, yeah, we know we call it having children because, you know, that's what pe people say. It's really short sighted. We're going to have a baby. Oh, no, I think you're going to have a middle aged man on his third divorce trying to buy a motorcycle. <laughs> I, I, I mean, what are you really having here? <laughs> <laughs> Is there something about Portlanders in particular that make it easy to share the movement with them, you think? Yeah, I think so, because Portland has a lot of free thinkers. And if, if you start out with that, you're, you're going to get somewhere. Uh, people who uh, just don't like 
any idea that they haven't thought of before, they're really uh, resistant to even hearing about it. But here in Portland, you know, you know, some people will hang around thinking of questions going, yeah, but what about? <laughs> <laughs> and it, I love it because sometimes they'll think of something new. And, I, and of course, I have to come up with different solutions. Has anyone ever like shaken your belief where you're like, I've never thought about it that way? Well, to some extent, not the basic idea that we, uh, that the intentional creation of one more human by anyone, anywhere, can't be justified. That's pretty much set. But sometimes somebody will come along and, and uh, give me some information and a source, and I'll go, oh, yeah, all right. So maybe just educating girls and women doesn't really make that big a difference. I had no idea. And then I, I look it up, and sure enough, that's not what does it. It's contraception that makes the big oh, difference. you mean for unwanted pregnancies. Oh, gotcha. For unwanted yeah. pregnancies, right. Uh, yeah. You know, somebody says, gee, I got a PhD and I still got pregnant. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> I love, and it's always those little things where you're just like, well, of course. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We thought our education would do it. <laughs> so how has the movement changed uh, since Roe versus Wade was overturned? The movement's pretty much the same. The only thing that's different is uh, a lot of men getting vasectomies. Mm. And uh, I think it's wonderful. It's too bad that it took that for men to finally step up and get snipped. So, yeah, I think uh, male responsibility for pregnancy is highly underrated because of the patriarchy, right? So yeah. um, hundreds of millions of women don't have the freedom to not procreate. And uh, every man has the ability to not cause uh, someone to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Just don't impregnate them. So, yeah. oh, yeah, I guess it is pretty simple, isn't it? Maybe I'm part of the patriarchy, too. I didn't really <laughs> think about that. You got a vasectomy over 50 years ago. Uh, have you seen others do the same because of your efforts? Yes. People have asked if I, if I thought I had converted anyone, and I don't know if I have really, but I know that there have been some men who say, you know what, I talked with you a few years ago, and I want you to know I got a vasectomy. So I give them the <laughs> Meritorious Service Award that we have all printed up for them, Meritorious Service to Planet Earth and the Human Family for preservation of wildlife habitat and oh, easing wow. of crowded conditions so they can put it on their wall. Like, congratulations. Okay, let's take a quick break here. And when we come back, let's talk about our imminent extinction. Smoothie King asks, what's that sound? <gasps> That's the sound of hearts popping out of your eyes when you see Smoothie King's all new smoothie bowls. These power pack beauties are just waiting to be spooned. Our smoothie bowls start with acai or pitaya and are handcrafted with fresh toppings like sliced bananas, sweet berries, ripe mangoes, crunchy purely Elizabeth granola, and a savory peanut butter drizzle. Mmm, that's the sound of a smoothie bowl being made fresh just for you. The new smoothie bowls menu, only at Smoothie King. I want to talk to you also just a little bit more about your thinking about extinction because uh, you're thinking the loss of biodiversity and what scientists are now calling the sixth extinction. You think that's more of a threat to all life on Earth than climate change. Can you explain a little bit more about where you're coming from with that? And like, also like, for anyone who's just like, what the heck is a sixth extinction? Can you less that up, please? <laughs> well, the, the fifth extinction was the one that killed off the dinosaurs and allowed us to grow from tiny little uh, critters running around trying not to get stepped on by dinosaurs. And uh, the age of mammals came along, and that's us. And everything mm -hmm. was fine until, well, we got a little too smart, got a little too much technology, and we probably started causing extinctions 500,000 years ago when we discovered fire and set the grasslands of, a of Africa on fire because the game were driven out by it. Some were cooked by it, got an instant barbecue. And in a sense, the same thing is still true. We only have cataloged about 2 million species and estimates are around 10 to 12 million species in existence. And so species are going extinct before we even catalog them. So while some people say, well, it can't be a sixth extinction, in the extinction, you get 90% of life wiped out. We aren't doing that. I say, mm -hmm. well, we're working on it. Populations have dropped by 70% since 1970. And you don't think that has anything to do with climate crisis? 
Oh, you know, there is some. Like uh, species are not able to adjust to the changes, mm -hmm. and they can only go so far. Polar bears, you know, they're already up as far up as they can go, though they can't go anywhere. But uh, the main one is habitat loss. The Center for Biological Diversity is the only major environmental organization that I know of that uh, addresses human overpopulation because they can see we're trying to save these species. Humans are moving in and not much lives where we live and we have to live somewhere. So the more of us there are, the fewer of wildlife. Yeah. You know, when the pandemic happened, people were noticing that wildlife was coming back and it was because we just weren't around thrashing around getting in their business. Like the animals were coming back when we were forced to stay in our houses. <laughs> well, a, a, a good example of that is Chernobyl species that hadn't been there for 50 years are coming back. Now, they do have some problems with the radiation, but apparently humans are a more toxic substance than plutonium, which is pretty amazing because plutonium is supposed to be the most toxic substance on the planet. Oh, my gosh. We got it beat. We're number one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, let's talk about New your New York Times article because uh, that was a pretty big profile. I'm sure you got a lot of feedback but I want to talk specifically about the tweet that Elon Musk wrote. He he basically stated that you and the article were part of the woke mind virus hurdling our society towards suicide. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. And also, he's like one to talk about yeah, the mind yeah, right. virus. <laughs> he wants to put things in our brains to, you yeah. know, and he's talking about a mind virus. So. <laughs> Well, what would you say now if, if Elon Musk was listening to our show? What would you tell Elon? He has how many kids? Let me look this up. Elon children. He has 10 children. That we know of, yeah. That, that he's willing know. to oh, ad, uh, admit to. <laughs> I would say don't worry. There are plenty of us. It'll be okay, Elon. Just enjoy life as you can and maybe take care of those 10 rather than adding more because that's a handful. True. Oh, man. I mean, maybe you should just send him some bumper stickers. Oh, yeah. A little pins. I don't know. Put one on a Tesla. That'd be great. Yeah. I'd love to oh, see. my God. And just take a picture. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good <laughs> troll. Les. So if what we've been talking about is resonating with some of our listeners, where can they go uh, find out uh, more information? Well, of course, the website has most of it. Uh, V-H-E-M-T for Voluntary Human Extinction Movement. I took the T from the end of movement so that it can say the acronym is vehement. So if somebody yeah. says, are you serious? I say, We're vehement. <laughs> cool. And what about for people who uh, maybe um, men who are a, a little afraid? I mean, I can't imagine why <laughs> why they would be yeah. afraid of, of having a vasectomy. What is your pep talk to them? Oh, gosh, you know, whenever I go to pep talk, I try to uh, figure out where the person is. So uh, I would ask questions first, you know, it's like, have you had all the offspring you want? Mm -hmm. Are you um, are you a, a fertile heterosexual? Uh, getting kind of personal, I know, but yeah. uh, sexually active. Uh, Say, so, you know, there's this simple little device. Uh, go! And some people will just start backing off right away. Oh, no. no. <laughs> and say, snip, snip. No That's must. your pep talk. <laughs> Les's pep talk is snip, snip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no muss, no fuss. Never having to say you're sorry. That's a pretty good pep talk. That's <laughs> solid. <laughs> Well, uh, could people who already have children join the movement? Oh, absolutely. The idea is to uh, not have more than we've already have gotcha. and to take care of what we have. And, of course, not pressure them for grandkids later on down the road. Les, do you have children? There are two billion children in my family, the human family. <laughs> I, I certainly hope not. It would really be embarrassing to find out that I had... <laughs> biologically <laughs> co-created a new human. Uh, you know, oh my God. Yeah. That would just be, that would be our gotcha uh, episode. And we're and uh, just snippets of you talking. And we're like, and last night has one child. Oh, uh. well, how could he do that? <laughs> I'll bet he flies too. <laughs> Have you heard of Nick Cannon? Yes. The uh -huh. comedian? 
And he has 12 children? Yeah, yeah. Have you thought about sending them some of your stickers? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Besides, you know, you can't close the barn doors after the horses have escaped. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm thinking there's going to be more is what I'm saying. <laughs> I More guess than there 12. Is, yeah, there's no limit, or especially if no. you're like Elon Musk. You just keep finding new surrogates and That's impregnate true. them. Well, thank you, Les. This has been a delight. I'm looking forward to even more profiles on you uh, in larger magazines because I want to. I just want to see all all the people getting mad at you on Twitter. It's it's <laughs> it's quite a joy. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> take take a number. Get mad at Les. <laughs> And now for your microdose of news. Multnomah County Animal Service shelters have cut their adoption fees in half for animals that are currently in shelters or foster homes. They say the move is indefinite as they push to increase adoptions and reduce the shelter population as soon as possible. This decision comes after they faced a lot of criticism earlier this year about the mistreatment of animals. If you haven't yet, check out our episode on the topic. You can find the link in the show notes. And the Portland Bureau of Transportation is tightening its regulations on outdoor street seating. The Healthy Business Permitting Program was created during the pandemic, but PBOT is now working on new guidelines focusing on driver and pedestrian safety. Over a thousand restaurants have accessed the permit system since 2020. They've all been asked to weigh in before the plans are passed on to city council for approval at the end of the month. For even more local news and events, Sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland. We'll throw a link in the show notes. That's all for us today here on CityCast Portland. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend, leave us a rating, leave us a review? I'm John Natariani, in for Claudia Meza. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. <laughs> <laughs>